No Film School's coverage of NAB is brought to you by Black Magic Design, amazing solutions for film, post-production, and television. Big Stock, videos and images for everyone. Color Grading Central, professional color grading with Color Finale. Shutterstock, where ideas take shape. So now we have this brand new camera here, which is sort of similar to the Ursa, but it's actually smaller, lighter, and it uses the new 4.6K 15-stop sensor that you guys have designed. Yeah, that's correct. Um, this is Ursa Mini. Um, what we wanted to do is, um, you know, the original Cinema camera design was designed to be handheld. And, and that was great, but obviously a lot of people wanted to use it for a lot of other situations like shoulder mount shooting. And Ursa solved a lot of those problems, but it was also designed for larger crews. You know, we got a couple of people. And really what we did with Ursa was we've got all the on-set equipment, the big monitor, the scopes, the whole lot, and we put it into one camera. Now that's great, but it's, you know, it's more of a tripod-friendly camera than, you know, sling it on your shoulder because it's big. You know, it's designed for that, that kind of use. So the, you know, the, the next step was to build a, a smaller, more handheld camera that in some ways you could handhold the same as the cinema camera body that we have, but at the same time also was more like Ursa. So it was almost a bridge between them. And um, the great thing is it's the same four models of Ursa that we have, the sensors, you know, the four and the 4.6K uh, sensors are all so available in here. So there's four Ursa Mini models as well. You know, two with the 4K sensor, EF and PL, and then right. two with the 4.6K, EF and, PL, uh, EF and PL. So there's that same combination. Um, now, it doesn't have the performance of Ursa because the Ursa's got the more processing, so it's 60 frames a second max versus 120 okay. on the Ursa. Ursa's obviously got scopes and three screens and all that. This is a bit different, but it's definitely a much better option for handheld. Like, if you look at the camera, um, I've got the body here, and the basic body comes with that, and as, if you look at the side, there's this handle on the side, which is a, uh, supports LANK, and it's got record buttons on it. Now, that handle comes with the body on the side, and there's a rosette here. Now, when you add the shoulder kit, which is 395, this shoulder pad and this top handle and this, this extender here come with that. And I've got those on this camera here. And I've also got the Ursa viewfinder. So that viewfinder for Ursa also works on Ursa Mini. So this is fully rigged up. Um, now, what that means is that I can now use the quick release for the camera tripod mount. Normally, just the body, you could bolt it to a tripod. But in this case, with the, with the um, shoulder pad, I've got the quick release. And the quick release is built into the shoulder pad. So if I want to unhook that, I can just bring it off like this and then I can put it on my shoulder and run the viewfinder and now I've got you know a, a handheld sort of solution and um, then if I want to put it back on the tripod I just um, write it back on and it's back on the tripod so you can run this indie film you can with the same handle on the side you can hold it out in front of you with the screen open it's got a wonderful little uh, bright uh, five inch screen on the side this is the great thing we don't need to make our viewfinders flip up so we can have really accurate optics because we've got screens on the sides of all the cameras so now, is this screen the same exact one that you have in the video assist? It is. It's actually a full HD screen with a really wide viewing angle, even though you can tilt it. Um, and it's all a touch screen. So all the on-screen menus, histogram and audio meters and everything are on there as well. Um, it's also got two CFast card recorders. So you can keep recording if you're doing an interview and the, you know, the card fills up. You can just keep going. But also now we can put down high-quality RAW using the two cards, and we're going to leave the cards. So we actually put two folders down. We do it on Ursa now, and we'll do it on this as well, where it puts every second frame in each card. So if you lost one of the cards, you've still got uh, the whole clip, just half the frame rate. And we put an audio track down on both, so you don't lose the audio track. So you can do okay. the same thing on here. So, the, so it's, it's a redundancy, essentially. It is, yeah, in a way. Like, you know, with RAID, of course, if you lose one card, you lost everything. Right. On this, even though when you do use the two cards, you've just, you're alternating between the cards. So that means two CFast cards are like double the speed of one CFast card or like way faster than SSD. Right. Um, there's also... So will that ensure that the high frame rates, you should be able to record those no problem on, on most CFast cards? Yeah, exactly. I mean, CFast is very fast, but being able to go those high frame rates is good because, I mean, you can compress more, but you really don't want to compress. You want to keep right. all that quality. Um, so I think in general terms, I mean, it's, it's a better form factor than the cinema camera from that point of view. It's, it is handheld in front of you, so it does that. That's what the cinema camera body was really good for. But it also does the on-the-shoulder, on-tripod, backwards and forwards very well as well. Um, but there's also a bunch of other things as well, like you think it's got 60 frames a second, whereas the cinema camera is limited to 30. Um, but it's also got the, the professional battery um, solutions on the back, so that's a big you know, standard uh, VMAT battery. And that's the same battery plate as the Ursa. Right, same thing. So you can go, you could use VMAT or you could use also Anton Bauer. Yeah, exactly. You can put whatever you like on there. Right. It's 12G SDI out, there's 12G on there, and there's also a time code in and, re um, and, and reference in. It's a standard power connector. And that power comes out the side here. There's a LANK. This is actually a prototype. The LANK's actually down the bottom. Um, there's a LANK connector on here. There's another LANK connector on the back. 
Um, there's audio inputs on the top, so it's balanced uh, audio with XLR connectors and phantom power. Um, so there's a lot of big improvements in a lot of ways. I mean, not only is it easy, easy to rig um, in the sort of way you want it, but it's also, it has the same form, you know, it's got the same advantages of being able to handhold it, but it's got all these extra features and all these extra technologies and capability that the, you know, the cinema camera body didn't have. So in a lot of ways, we've taken Ursa design and technologies down and sort of, you know, design it into a form factor that works like a cinema camera, but it's much better than the cinema camera body. Right, because a lot of people had said, and they saw the Ursa, they said, oh, this is great, you've, you've built a shoulder camera, but then you put it on your shoulder and you realize it is heavy, it's, yeah. it's, not, a, it's not a light camera, but now you've, yeah. so you've taken this down to seven pounds, I think it is? It's under three kilos, I'm not sure what that is in pounds. I, I think it's funny because, you know, a lot of people have misunderstood what, our, you know, what we were really doing, and you think we've only had three years to develop what other companies have been able to do in 35 years. Right. And we've, you know, in a lot of ways we've been designing different cameras for different types of function. And, you know, we don't think that there's just one camera that can do everything. What you really want is different types of camera for different, different things. And you still do want the handheld, you know, small camera. I mean, the cinema camera body is still the smallest, you know, really high resolution camera we've got. Right. But this is um, you know, a much more flexible design. And also, you know, um, you know, we've had more time to develop it. And, you know, this is magnesium, so it's very light. It's, um, you know, and, and that's a lot of money and cost and time to design those things properly. So... I think, you know, plus also, we've got a great customer base. I mean, they're pretty smart. They give us some good feedback, sometimes whether we want it or not. Um, but, you know, we get it, and it's like, yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, we can take this idea and put that in there. And, you know, it's almost like we've got a lot more customers that, that work with us. I mean, and we're all talking to everybody. We've got engineers on the booth, right, and we're talking to people. So, you know, in some ways, it helps us sort of collaborate with, you know, the user base and, and develop in directions and put all these ideas in because, you know, we're working with everybody to do that. Right, so, so a lot of this design then is based on feedback of people saying we want a, this specific camera that's this size that you can put on your shoulder. And now, so in terms of what this actually comes with body only yep. and price wise. Um, the body in the 4K sensor with this handle comes with it because without the handle you can't really can't use it, um, is uh, 2995 So it's the same price as the production camera 4K, okay. um, which is we've worked very hard to do because um, that really helps you get started. Um, now, this isn't upgradable. Earth is upgradable. This is not upgradable. You choose the, the body that you want, um, you know, the sensor you want when you, when you buy it. Um, the EF one, that's the EF one at, uh, with the 4K sensor. The PL one is $500 more, so it's, right. um, it's 3495 yeah. Exactly, yeah. And then the 4.6K versions are $2,000 more than the same 4K version. So that's... Uh, so it'll, be, it'll be 5000 4995 yeah. yeah. So now, is there any plan at all to release uh, like a package that includes all of these things? Because I know a lot of people, they see this camera and then they're going to have to buy the, uh, the viewfinder separately. Because the viewfinder really with that package, I mean, this makes a lot of sense as a shoulder cam. So is there any plans at all to release a, a version that has all of these things together? So if someone doesn't have this, you know, any versions of this camera or anything, they can just buy the whole thing right away. Yeah, we will. At the moment, we really just, um, we've got it, you know, getting it to market. But, uh, yeah, what we'd like to do in the next couple of months is work out a bundle package where the whole thing is like a price just for everything. And that'd be okay. pretty cool. But I've, I kind of worried that it might have been a bit too many different, you know, price lists and, you know, models and things. It was a bit chaotic initially. So I thought we'll just keep the core bodies and then there's the accessories. And then later on, we can kind of work out a way of designing the website that makes it logical. Right. So, because right. obviously sometimes you put too much in there and it just becomes really like, whoa, you know, I can't understand what's what. Even though you think it's going to be simpler, it actually turns out to be a bit harder. So, yeah. so it can be, you know, it's just a web design thing we have to do after the show. So I think, I think the one other thing that, I mean, people have looked for in shoulder cameras, and, and some cameras do have them, but uh, ND filters inside. And this camera doesn't have them, but is that something you explored putting into the camera, or is it something that maybe down the road you could explore? Well, ENG cameras have them because um, if you look at the B4 lens, it's a very tiny right. sensor, so it's a very tiny filter. Right. But we've got a Super 35 size sensor. If you had an ND filter wheel for that, you're talking about a big thing on the front. So, you know, generally, um, ENG cameras need that because you're out in the front of a courthouse and you swing around, you've got to flip the filter and, and go right. for it. These things you can plan a little bit more and you can make sure you've got a couple of ND filters for the lens. But I think an ND filter wheel on, on a camera like this with such a large sensor would just be huge. I mean, you'd really be a very big thing sticking out the front. So I'm not really quite sure whether that would work that well. You know. So they're they're both Super 35 though, and is is the new 4.6K exactly the same size or similar, bigger, smaller? Very very similar, very similar size. Okay. Yeah. Now also obviously it's global shutter as well as the same as yeah, the other one. It's global shutter up to 30 frames a second and rolling shutter up to 60. Okay. Um, that gives us a bit better um, dynamic range. So is that that's not selectable in the camera? Um, I th I don't know actually. It might be. I think it is actually selectable in the camera. Okay. Yeah, it is. Okay. So in both. 
the Ursa Mini and the big Ursa, yep. you can do global or rolling? Yes. Yep. And the Ursa goes obviously up to 120 and it's 60 frames rolling, uh, global, 120 rolling. So that's one difference with a 4K camera. With a 4K sensor, it goes all the way up to 120 frames global. Okay. But you don't get the dynamic range. Right. The problem with um, global shutters is you've got extra circuitry around each right. pixel, so you start to lose a bit of the, the pixel area, which then gives you, you know, problems with the amount of light you can get. So there's trade-offs with everything. So we've tried to really strike a balance with this to, between dynamic range and enough global shutter to be you know, great, but you, you kind of get trapped between the two worlds. So now in terms of specs on the global shutter versus rolling shutter, do you, dynamic range is usually affected by having the global shutter. Will that be the same case here? Yeah, it's slightly less dynamic range with the global shutter turned on, yeah. It's not much, but it's a little. Uh, so the other thing was HD frame rates compared to global and rolling. Are those, what will those be on the big Ursa and what will they be on the, the Ursa Mini? I'm not exactly, it's 150 or more uh, HD windowed frames a second. Um, we do that with the current fork. We did an update on Friday that does the, uh, that on, on Ursa. The, I mean, the great thing about this arm is this is a, a rosette on the side here and it's a lank uh, controls on the, on the handle. So you really do want this arm so you can relocate the handle down because when you're hand holding it, you want to use the same, and it's a great handle. You just don't want it on the side because it's not much point there because you really wouldn't hold the camera up like that. So we have that, this arm comes with it so you can get it down lower and you can also loosen it off and, and relocate where you want to. And the handle's also got a, um, there's a, a screw under there so you can rotate the handle as well. So you can really get it to exactly how you like, the, you know, right, the feel right. that you like. And also the uh, one other thing is the shoulder pad can move forward and back quite a lot. So you can really put quite a heavy lens on, shift the whole camera's bounce back so you can bounce the camera because that's a big thing also. I mean, there's all these little things that we've done. You've got to be able to bounce the camera. Otherwise, you know, you've got yeah, a big yeah. lens on it and suddenly it's falling forward. You want to be able to kind of kick it back a bit. And right. get it forward, and even the viewfinder also comes forward quite a bit, so you can get the whole camera body back a bit, get the viewfinder and the shoulder pad forward. So there's a lot of adjustability. Right, and something we mentioned before is that this viewfinder, as long as you could provide power to it, should work with any of your other cameras. Yeah, it'll work. It's just, I mean, there's, you know, we like to everything we do is open. If you look at almost every product we do, it's got SDKs. Da Vinci's really open. Everything we do is really, really open, and I, that's the big thing. I don't like trapping people. You know, like you, know, you feel trapped if you got stuff closed up. I don't like closed ecosystems, and. So even the viewfinder connection, even though we know we're going to do a viewfinder, it's just the same four pin power connector that broadcast products use and it's just a BNC connector with HDSDI on it. So it's all just the same stuff. Even the, when we do do a protocol or file format, we put it in the manuals so that you can just work it how it works. So That's great. That's exciting. Thanks a lot, Grant. I appreciate it. Thanks for your time.